from Isaiah 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. A reading from Luke 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Cornarius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them at the inn. So over the past four Sundays, we have listened to the prophets lift up a vision of a world filled with hope and peace and joy and love, a world where no one is ever afraid and no one is ever in need. It's what we pray for every Sunday in the Lord's Prayer. Only unlike the prophets who saw that promise breaking into their world in their own times, we push that vision off, that dream off into some nebulous future. But for the prophets, God's promises were as immediate as tomorrow. I think about Mary's song, which we heard last week. Her baby Jesus was not yet born. She was six months pregnant, we are told. And yet she was already singing about how God was turning the world upside down with his birth. In fact, her confidence in God's promises were so sure, she sang as if the work had already been done. It can be a challenge to faith to understand why God doesn't magically heal all hearts and flood the world with justice and peace. And it can be a challenge to come to Christmas once more to celebrate the birth of the baby whose birth was supposed to change the world, and yet there's still so much pain and so much hurt and so much injustice in this world. I wonder if there's a certain amount of comfort for us in pushing the fulfillment of those promises off into the future, because if it's not a future hope, then we just might lose faith. Because if God intended everything to be made right 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born, and there's still so much brokenness in the world today, then what does that say about God? What does that say about our faith? And yet we still show up. Every Christmas Eve, we still show up. And we still hope because we need to. We hope for that day when mourning and crying and pain will be no more because we know what it is to grieve. We know what it is to struggle. We know what it is to suffer injustice. We hope for the day when justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream because we know what it is to see everything of value crumble around us. And we hope for that day when swords will be beaten into plowshares. We hope for that world the prophets talked about, but deep down we know God does not promise an escape from life. But God does promise to walk through life with us. If God promised an escape, 
then God would have fixed everything long before Jesus was born. But here we are. And so those promises of God must mean something slightly different than what we hope for and pray for. You see, that baby whose birth we celebrate tonight was born. He grew up. He did not stay in the manger. He hasn't been there for 2,000 years. And when all the pressure was put on him to stage a military coup and overthrow Rome, he just quietly went around weeping with those who were grieving he spoke up for those who were being unjustly condemned. He healed those whose wounds were visible and those whose wounds were invisible. He gave sight to those who could not see and strength to those who could not walk. All the while, everything else was still going on around him. There's a wonderful line in the Gospel of John we often read it on Christmas Eve about the Word becoming flesh and dwelling among us. Dig a little deeper and what that word really means is that God set up a tent in our midst. God lives among us. You see, Christmas is about the God who sees us, who hears us, and who is with us, both in the joys and in the struggles of life, and who shows us what love looks like when things are not perfect. Our worship theme this past month has been focused on how we could be Christ's body, Christ's presence, meeting others where they are, letting them know that we see them, that they are not alone, that there's a place for them, not just in God's heart, but in our hearts. We've looked at how we can be a, a house of welcome and safety and comfort for people who are really struggling with life. Well, tonight we remember that we are also the ones whom God has come to be with. We are also the ones God invites to the manger to see what love looks like in the flesh. I look back on these past few years, and not just the couple years of COVID, but years. Some of you have lost spouses. Some have lost children. Some have lost jobs or struggled in jobs that sap more out of you than they give. Some of you have struggled with depression. You've had suicidal thoughts. You've been bullied at school. You've been abused by family and friends. And we've all struggled to one degree or another with loneliness and isolation, especially these last two years. I could go on, but I don't think I need to. And I don't mean to make it sound like our lives are terrible, and that there's just no joy in life, because there's plenty of joy in life, and we have experienced that as well. But most of us know what it's like to have those moments when we feel like no one sees us, and no one knows the depths of the struggles we face. But Christmas reminds us that God sees, and God knows. I was reminded the other day of a poem by Ann Weems called Yesterday's Pain. Here's part of that. Some of us walk into Advent tethered to our unresolved yesterdays. The pain still stabbing, the hurt still throbbing. It's not that we don't know better. It's just that we can't stand up anymore by ourselves. That's how some of us come to Christmas. Life has a lot of joy, but it can also be very hard. And it's okay at Christmas to say sometimes we are the ones who need to be seen. We're the ones who need to be heard. We're the ones who need someone to help us stand up and navigate this thing we call life. There's an ancient tradition that says God cannot stand for anything unholy or unclean or imperfect to be in God's presence. And yet Jesus was born not into a pristine, sterile, perfect temple, but into the temple of humanity. A child born to poor parents who had no place to lay their head, whose first visitors were a bunch of smelly shepherds. That's about as unholy and unclean as you can get. Hardly an auspicious beginning. According to the Gospel of Matthew, within a couple years of Jesus' birth, his family had to flee to Egypt in fear for their lives, 
refugees 2,000 years ago whose story is shared by so many today. You know, I look back at Jesus' life and, you know, maybe we have misunderstood not only what it means to be holy, but what the prophets were telling us. Holy is not about anything we do to make ourselves perfect. It's what God says we already are. And the promise echoing throughout time isn't of a day when we won't struggle anymore. It's not even a day when we won't grieve anymore. But the promise echoing throughout time is that God is with us right where we are because we are the holy children of God. Let me close with another poem by Anne Weems. The Christmas spirit is that hope which tenaciously clings to the hearts of the faithful, that's why we're here, and announces in the face of any Herod the world can produce and all the indoors slammed in our faces and all the dark nights of our souls, that with God all things are possible, that even now unto us a child is born. Friends, hear the good news. Unto us, unto you, a child is born, and he is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen.